We have come together to think about how do the Supreme Court decisions that have shaped our understanding of human rights in America, how have they been uh, influenced by broader social political movements? You've read about a lot of those political movements in the current scene. You've seen people organize themselves to, uh, to claim their rights. Women have organized several marches since the election of our latest president. You know, I've always been fascinated by the Supreme Court. Think about it this way. Why should nine people who have lifetime tenure, who work in a white marble palace, have the final say about the most important issues of the day? I mean, didn't we all learn in school that under little d democratic theory, that was the job of the legislature, not the courts? So one of the most fun things about teaching law is introducing people to new jargon and buzzwords. We'll be looking at the challenges that women and uh, lesbian and transgendered people pose to government decisions that dehumanize them and deny them their full rights in public life. We'll conclude the course by looking at the similar situation for immigrants facing today. You've no doubt read the headlines of people who are organizing various marches on behalf of DACA students and other immigrant groups who have been in the United States. Quite literally, you see the history of our country being written in the headlines of today's newspapers and in the legal decisions that are coming down from the Supreme Court. One of the most interesting things when you think about law reform is how different groups use different strategies and tactics in their fight for equality. For people of color, primarily African Americans, they followed a brilliant strategy devised by Thurgood Marshall when he was the chief counsel of the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, which was a slow, steady, systematic progress through the courts. But for women and LBGT people, their strategy was a little different. It began with political activism, and that activism was later translated by Ruth Bader Ginsburg and some others into judicial decisions. And one of the things I'm really excited about, Judy, is that lawyers use language with a precision and clarity, and their arguments rest on a lot of wide-ranging assumptions that in popular uh, discussions are ill-defined. So by looking carefully at the Supreme Court decisions and broader social movements, we'll be able to com combine the clarity the lawyer brings to legal explication and a broader understanding of how social and political movements shape American democracy. Don't make the mistake of thinking that the Supreme Court are masters of clarity. Sometimes teaching a Supreme Court opinion is like unpeeling the layers of an onion and decoding the jargon before you get to what they're really talking about. This is the sort of work that we're excited about and sharing with you in our course, Democracy, a Work in Progress. It'll begin on October 23, 9 to 12 for four weeks, three hours a week. And we're really excited to engage you in a discussion about democracy, a work in progress. 